I'm your daughter's or son's college composition instructor, the guy who's supposed to spill all of that red ink all over your teen's papers, but I don't spill so much of it anymore. Instead, I'm learning how to be a closer reader of my students' writing. I want to share a little uh, about how and why I give the feedback that I give. I'm Peter Stevens over at Heritage. The college has us do a lot of informal writing, and for good reason. Blog posts, class journal entries, discussion forum posts, they all teach us to think as we write and to do it with a real audience in mind. When I respond to a blog post, say, or a journal entry, I'm like the students. I write specific feedback that never is critical about grammar, usage, or style. When I do that, I'm modeling the kind of close reading that writers need more than anything. This kind of informal writing mixes the uncritical freedom of your student's social media with a developing depth of thought and expression necessary for college and the workforce. Blog posts and the like mixed with engaging, specific, and positive feedback from teacher and students gives the freedom to experiment and to make mistakes. Some students even stumble onto their long lost writing voices. And they remember that writing is about rhetoric, about real audiences, and for real occasions. Each quarter, I give one of our longer papers the full treatment. I pick one page out for red ink. But I give recorded verbal feedback about my experience as a reader, taking in the whole paper. I'll always compliment something big in their paper that I liked. I'll almost always find something big in their paper to revise. These voice recordings go from three minutes to 15 minutes, depending on what I find and how much help I feel I can be. Fresh from that feedback on those papers, my students get to write another draft. The problem with the red ink approach to grading is its focus on grammar and mechanics. Some students come to believe that a flawless surface structure is where it's at from this kind of approach. According to UCLA professor Stephen Kuser, they lose sight of the, quote, communicative and exploratory nature, close quote, of writing. The kind of writing I want to see overflow from our informal writing into our bigger papers. Besides, red ink only grading makes students think teachers are those soulless grading machines who don't read for content. In other words, according to Professor Ken McRory, students will think that teachers don't care what students write. Another problem is that if we grade for errors, we lose touch with what it's like to write. We English teachers are often too quick to treat confusing papers as failures of expression. Just reword it, man. But if I remember that writers think as they write, it'll occur to me that in one professor's words, the student may only have realized her intention after the fact that the composition of the first draft helped her to grope toward an intention for it. In other words, confusion may not always be an issue of wording, though it often is. Bigger areas of confusion may be a sign that a student by the end of her draft is just moving into some really deep thinking. My job is to encourage her for a deeper dive during her next draft. Besides, an undue focus on grammar doesn't even help with grammar, especially the grammar instruction many of us English teachers have to do to prepare for the students for their SOLs. Grammar drills do help them pass the multiple choice portion of the writing SOL, but it has been proven over and over that, quote, teaching grammar fails to improve student writing, close quote. In fact, the Venerable National Council of Teachers of English has urged, quote, the discontinuance of testing practices that encourage the teaching of grammar rather than English language arts instruction, close quote. Grammar should be taught, no doubt about it, but it should be taught as part of writing instruction. In other words, as another means to achieve rhetorical ends. And here are some fine books that teach us teachers just that. I'm enjoying teaching grammar in the greater context of rhetoric, but what I like about this job more than anything is reading and responding to your students' writing. Thank you so much for watching. Here now is a list of all of the photos that you've seen in this video, and I thank them all for their kind permission.